Welcome everyone. Tonight we have the Model Gaming Show live. I'm your host, GW Fox. It's April 12th, 2018, and let's get right into tonight's show. So no new real releases this week, although next week we've got two high profile ones whose review scores have already been released, God of War and Yakuza 6. I'm gonna hold off and do those next week because I have a little bit more to say about both of them and uh, I'd just rather forego talking about them until next week. The first story I want to talk about is a news report came out from the ex-head of Bioware uh, basically saying that EA was a very good collaborative partner uh, creatively, creativity, <laughs> creatively, excuse me, and they did not force the Frostbite engine on Bioware. Bioware had the choice to use it and they knew that their engine from the previous games weren't gonna transition over. And so they figured they'd start from scratch or go with something that EA already had, thinking down the line they could use assets and whatnot and it would all be part of a cohesive unit under EA. So they forced it upon themselves and clearly it's not meant for third person shooters and it was a less experienced team than the main Bioware studio. Other studios have used the Frostbite engine to great success, but this team did not. Uh, the engine that they had also really wasn't for multiplayer, and that was another big thing that they wanted to use for the Frostbite engine. So uh, months ago, we talked about how, uh, I t excuse me, I talked about how Frostbite was the only uh, through line in all these different problems with EA, but finding this out actually changes it. That if it's true what this guy's saying, which at the, this point he really has no reason to lie. He doesn't work uh, there anymore and there's no reason to not tell the truth. So it's it's pretty enlightening that they force it upon themselves, maybe, maybe thinking to a PZA, I, I don't know. But it's worth discussing, it's worth talking about, and knowing that they did this to themselves makes it all the more disappointing, right? You have one of the most anticipated games of this generation and frankly it fell short. Again, I enjoyed it. I waited until there were uh, patches and everything was cleaned up and I quite enjoyed it. I think I put 60 hours into it and enjoyed my time with it. Do I, rem will I remember it as fondly as I do the first three? No. Is it anywhere close to Metal uh, Mass Effect 2 or 3 in my opinion? No but it was a solid game. Next, in an interesting case of music licensing, this happens more than you think, and it's always weird when it does. Rockstar is going to be forced to remove licensed music from GTA 4. It's, it's crazy to me, okay? So they had a 10 year license. Think about that, GTA 4 is already 10 years old. Uh, they had a 10 year license on this music. And I, under, I get the idea that hey, if you have any new copies, you can't include this licensed music. But to retroactively take them out of the game, like you're patching them out of the game. So somebody could be playing today and then tomorrow they patch it and those songs are no longer in there. It's just always an odd thing to me and music licensing in games has always been something that I think they haven't figured out yet. In movies, uh, they license it for God knows how long. But I, I can't recall a, a time where a song in a movie that, that, that was huge, right? Where it's like a song in a movie, the license lapsed and you couldn't, they had to replace it. That just seems so odd. But in video games, it happens more often than you think. And some games actually don't get remastered and what because of that, because the music's such a big part of that, that it would cost so much money to relicense that music. The one caveat is that Rockstar said, yeah, we're gonna take all that out, but we're gonna add a bunch of new music, so don't worry about it. So Rockstar has the money, they can, they can support it, and they can probably take games from, or license music from GTA 5 or something like that, music that they've already licensed, and cut a new deal uh, and put it in GTA 4. Something like that sounds like an easy fix, and I'm, I'm sure that's what's gonna happen. A uh, big, bigger story that I want to talk about it uh, this week, which is which is really cool, and I'm um, gonna get into it. But uh, Cliffy B's, uh, formerly of Epic, um, his new studio, Boss Key Productions, I think it's called. Uh, they released Lawbreakers, and that game did not go over well. Um, they really 
made a game that they kind of wanted to make, not necessarily that the community wanted. So there were definitely avid supporters of it, but they basically said they were going to stop really supporting that game going further. It did not do well. Um, it had a very small but passionate fan base, but you can go back and play Browser Quake now, and that's kind of the feel they were going for. It, it looked and it got decent reviews too. I think it got around 80, do you know what I mean? So it's not like it was a bad game. It's just an online multiplayer shooter. There's a lot of those, and it just didn't have anything special, right? It didn't, it was a hero shooter. It didn't, it couldn't beat Overwatch, so you're out. If you're not competing with Overwatch, you're out. What they did do is they released a game on Steam early access for 15 bucks called Radical Heights. And it's definitely going after the uh, PUBG and Fortnite market. It is a battleground shooter. But it looks a little bit different. It's got an 80s vibe. It's got some humor in there. And um, it, it actually looks pretty cool. It's got a, so basically you have a bankroll. What makes it different is you have a bankroll instead of finding weapons out in the environment where you can go and take money out of your ATM and go and purchase weapons for that round. So the more money you build by winning and playing, the better weapons that you can get subsequently for each game. I actually really like this concept as long as there are no loot box, loot boxes or ways to buy money in-game currency with real money. I think that would break the game completely because someone could just spend a hundred bucks. So as long as they don't do that, they'll be fine. But what's really cool is they're releasing this in early access and people are like, yeah, it's buggy, whatever. They've only been working on it for five months. It's basically a, like they're calling it alpha, but it's like a pre-alpha phase really. Five months and they've got a fully working product it, it, for the most part. Yes, it's buggy, but it, even though the reviews on Steam right now, I the last I looked, they were about three out of five stars. Hell, for that kind of game and for the vitriol that people spew, I'm, I'm considering that like a smash hit. Especially for right now, early access. This game's only gonna get better with time and it looks, it, it has a distinct visual style and a distinct uh, way to play. So I think that's really gonna help it out. And even if you're getting the crumbs of PUBG and Fortnite, that still might be enough because those user bases are so large that they might get tired. Or it'll be something that those people will go check in on every couple of months and once it gets better, they might go, hey, this, is, this plays better, I like this better, and jump over to that. The final topic I wanna to talk about tonight is concerned again with Valve, uh, this time more directly. So as part of their general privacy settings with all these data breaches that have been happening, Equifax, Facebook, all this crap, okay, people's privacy is of the utmost concern right now uh, for the general public. And so what Valve has done is uh, they've patched in basically an auto default setting for their system, right? And as part of that default setting, it has now made all users' libraries private. So unless you're friends or whatnot, you, or you request, you cannot just default and see people's library. So a company that's been running for many years now called Steam Spy made their business off of guessing sales based on those libraries, right? They can see uh, what libraries people have and go off of that. Well, now they can't. And most people will never change default settings. 99% of all people don't mess with default settings. Frankly, I'm one of them. I'll actually probably go back and allow my uh, library to be seen because any friends I have will be able to see that stuff and find me because of that, right? So it also they're also constricting how you can be viewed and, and a lot of other things. But the main thing I want to talk about is the owner of Steam Spy basically said, yeah, that's it, we're shutting it down. Like this just happened, like very recently. And he just go, he, I mean, I get that striking while the iron is hot and whatnot, but he's just coming out and going, our business model now doesn't work. There's no longer any point to any of this because our numbers will just be completely useless as is. Uh, so this iteration of Steam Spy and what it offers is done. Um, that it, it, The owner says, I don't think Valve deliberately did this. Uh, I don't think it was anything that um, was deliberate towards us. And while 
I would tend to agree. In this case, Steam, you know, for a long time, like nobody wants their NPDs released, right? Or NPDs. Nobody wants their game sales released. Nobody wants that information public, especially when you can charge for it. And while even the owner of Steam Spy admits that this was, uh, you know, a long time coming, basically, um, I still think that Valve did, in part, do this because of that. Yes, they can do it in the name of privacy, which is a good thing. It, it, it in, increased security and privacy is a good thing. Uh, and that's, that's not what I'm saying if you're thinking otherwise. I, I do agree with that. But for them, it, it just seems so pointed, right? And yes, it sucks that Steam Spy is getting shut down, but that was the only real way to even remotely guess sales for games on the PC through like Steam. Uh, yeah, you've got EA's Origin and Uplay and GOG and all these other damn services, right? But they're all separate companies and they're not reporting that crap. So this was like a pretty accurate way to guess how many sales and guess how well games are doing. And now that is completely gone. So I guess somebody else thinks something else up, but uh, in the meantime, Steam Spy is shut down and they're gonna have to figure something else out. Thank you everyone for watching. If you're watching live, if you're catching this on the archive or on YouTube, I appreciate any views and uh, please comment in the comments below. You can catch me at GWFox, F-A-W-K-E-S on Instagram and Twitter. Hit me up and uh, you can catch me here uh, Mondays and Thursdays from 8 to 10 p.m. either playing a game or doing this show. Uh, excuse me, Mondays 8 to 10 right now, 8 o'clock until this show's over. Um, uh, and playing games, doing the show, uh, just trying to have a discussion here. Um, I'm in a new setup. It take, took me a while, had to get a, get a sh quick show in last week, and uh, it's taken me a while. I'm in a new spot. It's much more comfortable. I should be able to do a, a lot more streaming. I've been uh, pretty bad the last month or so because of um, vac vacations, just personal stuff that I can't really control. And... Uh, that there will be some of that in May as well, but once June hits, I'm planning on going full force at this thing. Let me start dressing a little bit nicer, make it a little bit more professional, and uh, hope you guys enjoy. But for everyone watching now, I really appreciate it. This is twitch.tv forward slash model gaming show, and have a good night.